Hey everyone, welcome back to Figma Fusion Studio. Today, we're diving into an essential concept in Figma components. If you're designing in Figma, components will help you maintain consistency and speed up your workflow. Let's break it down and see how it works with a simple button example. A component in Figma is a reusable design element. Instead of creating the same design over and over, you can make it a component once and reuse it across your project. This is especially useful for UE elements like buttons, icons, and cards. Today, we'll start with a simple button as an example. First, I'm selecting the text tool using the shortcut and naming it button. Next, I'm converting it into an auto layout by using the shortcut shift A. We'll create a video on how to use auto layout effectively, along with some useful tricks. As per organizational standards, we need to update the button's padding to ensure consistency and proper spacing. I'm setting the top and bottom padding to 8, the left and right padding to 16, and keeping the gap at 0 for now, and updating the background color as well. Converting it into a component. You can find the component icon at the top right, or use the shortcut option command K on Mac and alt Stroll K on Windows. Renaming the component to button for better organization and clarity. Next, we need to create variants for different button states like hover, active, and focus. To do this, select the component. In the same place where you found create component, you'll now see a button called add variant. Click on it and a new variant will be added. It will be grouped with the original component and outlined with a purple border. Next, we need to give proper names to our variants. Select the newly added variant, and on the right sidebar, you'll see the variant name as button. Below that, you'll find current variants and property one. Change property one to state and rename variant two to hovered. Now let's create an artboard to place our button. To do this, press F4, A, to activate the frame tool and select a suitable frame size. Then, go to the assets panel, where you'll see all the variants we've created. For now, since we've only created a button, drag, and place the button component onto the artboard. Select the button's hovered state and update the color. Now, we want the color to change when the mouse hovers over the button. To do this, switch to prototype mode and select the button. You'll see a plus. Icon click on it and drag it to the hovered state. In the interaction panel, Change the trigger from on clicks to while hovering. Then go to preview mode, hover over the button, and you'll see the color change in action. Next, we need to create additional states, active, pressed, focused, and disabled. Let's start by creating a new variant for the active state. Click on add variant, and a new variant will be added. Change its background color to indicate the active state. Then, update the property name to states and rename this variant to active for better organization. Now, go to prototype mode, select the hover state, and drag the connection handle to the active state. Keep the trigger setting as it is. Similarly, we need to create focus and disabled button variant. Focus state, add a new variant. Update the background or add an outline to indicate focus and rename it to focus. Disabled state. Add another variant, adjust the opacity or color to indicate a disabled state and rename it to disabled. Now, let's go back to the artboard and check the newly added variant. By switching between states, select the button and in the right side properties panel, you'll find a dropdown called state where you can choose from the variants we created. Your button might have an icon in some positions. Let's see how we can add it. Here, I have a set of icons. I'll copy one and paste it into the button, and updating the gap to eight. Now, let's check the button on the artboard. However, we don't have any control over the icon. It remains visible in all places. If we need the option to hide the icon in some cases, we have to add a visibility control. To do this, go to the main component and select the icon. 
On the right side panel, under the Appearance section, you'll see some icons. Click on the Apply Variable or Properties icon, then click the plus icon in the small pop-up. In the Create As option, choose Property because we're not creating a variable here. Name and icon right since our icon is positioned on the right side. Set the value to True and click the Create Properties button. Now, go back to the artboard and check how it works. Select the button and you'll see a new controller that allows you to toggle the visibility of the icon. Here, we have an issue wherever we use the button, there's only one icon, and we don't have an option to switch between different icons. To fix this, we need to create a property that allows us to swap icons dynamically. Let's see how we can do that. Go to our icon section and select all the icons. Then, navigate to the Create Component section. You'll notice a small down arrow next to the Create Component button click on it. There are two ways to achieve this. One method is to click on Create Multiple Component. Now, you can see that each icon has been converted into an individual component. Next, create a frame by pressing F and dragging a box around the icon. Change the frame's background color to a light gray, as our icons are white. Then, copy an icon and paste it into the button, replacing the old icon we previously added. Finally, delete the old icon inside the button. Next, we need to create a property that allows us to swap icons dynamically. Select the icon inside the button. On the right side panel next to the icon name, you'll see an option called Create Instance Swap Property. Click on it. Name the property, Right Icon Swap since our icon is positioned on the right side. If needed, select a default icon, then click Create Property. Now, go to the artboard and check how the swap property works. Select a button, and you'll see a new property that allows you to change the icon dynamically. While deleting the old icon, we also removed the visibility control. We need to re-add it. Go to the main component and select the icon. In the right side appearance section, click on the variable property icon. You'll see the right icon property that we created earlier selected. Now go back to the artboard and check. The visibility toggle should be available again. Another issue is that we added the icon only to the default state. If we switch to another state, the icon won't be there. To fix this, go to the main component. Copy the icon from the default variant. Paste it into all the other variants. This will also copy all the controls like visibility and icon swapping. Now go back to the artboard and check all the states should have the icon with full functionality. Here, we only added the icon on the right side, but it can also be placed on the left. We can add it the same way. Earlier, I mentioned that there are two ways to swap icons. I will explain the second method in the next video. So far, we have created just one button. In upcoming videos, we will cover large and small buttons, other button types like secondary, alert, and link buttons. Stay tuned for more. Don't forget to like and subscribe.